Hello everyone, welcome to this is Ali Nassim. Welcome to another case-based learning module. This is CBL number 15. We're doing an anterior tooth using again the ESX instrumentation and obturation system. So stick around. Okay folks, let's take a quick look at this anterior central incisor on the left side of this patient that requires root canal therapy due to necrosis and a periapical infection. As usual, what we always do is we determine the um, estimated working length and in this tooth it is 22 millimeters. This is the maxillary left central incisor. You can see the lesion here. And we then place the rubber dam. I use the handy dam rubber dam, which is a uh, fairly easy one to apply because of the fact that it includes the frame inside it. And as you can see, I'm using a number nine um, clamp I uh, clamp on this tooth and then after inversion I start the access opening. I use the Rewald Endo access kit. This is the modern access kit which includes burrs such as the 6801 Duracut and what the burr does is it allows access through some of these modern crowns uh, as you can see here. This one is a lithium disilicate crown and these crowns as you can uh, as you know are very hard and very difficult to access through. It's no longer the same type of uh, feeling and removal capability as you had previously with regular diamonds using porcelain bonded to metal. With the zirconia and the Emax crowns, which are lithium disilicate crowns, uh, you need to use specific kinds of burrs and this Brassler 6801 Duracut burr as well as some of the brazed uh, diamonds are really ideal for this particular situation. Now I'm using this at real time to demonstrate how long it takes to access. You have to use very light brushing action and uh, gently remove the, uh, the material in a very very light uh, motion with lots and lots of water as you can see here. I'm using Brassler's uh, Forza electric handpiece which has lots of torque and allows for easy removal of this material. But I also like to showcase here that my the tip of my handpiece starts to interfere with the clamp and so I switch from the regular uh, handpiece that they have to their surgical uh, 45 degree handpiece and what this allows me to do is to change my orientation so I can come in now no longer interfere with the clamp and at the same time have a more direct straight line access. This is the surgical handpiece that you would use during your extractions as well as your apicoectomy um, procedures to resect the root end or resect the root in order to remove it during extractions. Uh, but you can also use it during non-surgical root canal therapy and in this case it allows me to have better access. So here I'm just speeding up the process because it's going to be fairly boring to watch this but after almost four minutes of cutting in such manner I'm only through about a millimeter and a half or two millimeter of the um, uh, lithium disilicate and now I'm into dentin and therefore I switched to 1557 a burr that is also in the Rewald Endo access kit and this saber cut burr is very very uh, efficient in terms of cutting and uh, getting through the dentin. So as you saw after a few quick strokes I'm already through the, uh, uh, the roof of the pulp chamber and then I move on to use the Forza V3 ultrasonic which is one of my routines every time I use a handpiece and I generate some cut debris I move to use that to remove the debris efficiently. Now I'm using the 6856 uh, Duracut which is also in the access kit just to make everything flow like a diamond and immediately follow that up with the Forza V3 with my E14D tip. Now I'm using the surgical length round burrs and this what this does is it allows the um, um, slow, you know, removal of the triangle of dentin around the CEJ in a little bit more uh, controlled manner. Once again after cutting dry with the slow speed burr use the ultrasonic to dry up. Now I'm using I'm doing my final isolation. The initial isolation that we do with the rubber dam is basically meant to prevent the patient from swallowing the fluids that we use as well as any potential uh, debris, uh, chunks of filling or even your files. Ultimately to do the proper isolation which is an isolation that is bacterially and fluid tight what you need to do is you need to apply a different kind of um, um, a material here, Opal Dam, in order to completely seal 
the potential of leakage of the cravicular fluid around the CEJ of the tooth. So I do that here and then I proceed to uh, cure that with my Velo Light from Ultradent. And then I proceed to um, do the uh, orifice opening. Now I'm using the 2508 ESX file, which is the orifice opener, and doing it one or two uh, strokes only, uh, followed by wiping by my assistant. And what that does is basically it's a version of your SSC motion, which removes the uh, debris from uh, the file. And I follow that immediately with the ultrasonic again. Ultrasonic and water is the most efficient way to remove debris uh, that has been cut in the canal. So I do that and then uh, I uh, proceed to uh, place a little bit of hypochlorite in the root canal. And uh, this I use a 6% full strength hypochlorite, but I'm not really going that deep now. Uh, now I'm using my ESX expediter and what the expediter does, I've just set it at about 20 millimeters. Remember our estimated length was 22 and it easily goes to 20 millimeters. What this action does is it removes some of that mid root dentin that would restrict your ability to access the apex. Once that has been removed, now I move on to use my apex locator in order to determine the working length. I use the precision apex locator. That's again Walt Brassler's apex locator, but if you have any apex locator of the latest generation that you're comfortable with using, that will work as well. But one of the most important things that I uh, always advocate is to uh, not only rely on your apex locator, but also to determine, uh, to verify the length following using your apex locator with a uh, confirmation x-ray. Because you get information not only about the length of the root, which your apex locator could have already given you, but you also get very valuable information about the configuration of the root, whether there are any apical anatomies, or any apical curvatures and things like that, which will essentially determine for you what kind of um, you know, master apical file you should use. So here we find that our 22 millimeter length is confirmed with a radiograph that we take. And now we're already uh, ready to put your, uh, our um, and by the way, don't forget that you need to double confirm this because in case the file had moved or the patient had closed on it, you may get the wrong uh, length reading. So confirm the length, put some hypochlorite in there, and now all the files are set at that length, which is 22 millimeters. Of course, all the files in the ESX system means just the expediter here first, which we're going to try to get down to that length. And you can see that the expediter really went to length with minimal amount of resistance or engagement. So uh, we're talking here, if we look at the uh, ESX uh, protocol and the technique card, we're talking about a, uh, uh, a, a large size canal here. Again, I'm using here the Forza V3 ultrasonic just to remove the debris. And every time I do that using water, then I add hypochlorite, full strength hypochlorite to the tooth from the top. And uh, now uh, the technique card here is showing us that since we got the expediter down with minimal uh, amount of engagement, therefore we need to use a 45 for this particular tooth. So we, mo uh, we move on to use our finishing ESX file uh, to put on a size 45. And we determined that uh, we use the same full working length, which was 22 millimeters. And now our goal is to get that particular finishing file. And you can see here I'm using my finger.